Now, the this word is a context-based word. In other words, it has context. It has a reference. If I was to say, look at this without a context, well, you simply wouldn't know what I was looking at. You need context. You need me to point to what I'm looking at, like a memory pointer. I could be pointing to a car engine, or I could be pointing to a piston that I took out of the car engine or a stack of papers on my desk. So we need context when we work with this. When you open your browser window, there is an environment that is established, and that is the window object. We create the window object that contains all of the default properties and methods that make up the JavaScript API. However, we also have the this keyword that is set up in memory. And depending on where you use this keyword, it will change and it will have a different pointer. So first of all, this by default points to the window object. When you open a new tab, it creates a window object for that window. And then of course, it just says that this memory pointer is just pointing to the window context. So by default, it's the window object and then it can change but how does it change? So I've logged this out in the console. Let's just comment this out with the double forward slash and that will comment that line out and it will just nullify. You can actually write English in this line. It's just a nice way to comment your code. You can add it in any way you'd like. By the way, I'm sure you've downloaded some of the lecture files and that's exactly what I've been doing. I've just been adding in a few little comments in the code to teach people what I have done. So now we have this object here and let's take a look at the property first of all. So we say object.prop. Now, if the this keyword is found inside of a property in an object, it just points to the window object again. It doesn't change its context. Likewise, if I have an array and an array is an object and the first key is zero, so we want to target this first element, let's go to array and then pull out the zero indexed item, which is the this keyword again. And when I type that in, you'll notice we get the window object again. So if you have the this keyword within an object property or within an element in the array, it's always pointing to the window object. But what happens really with the this context? If it always points to the window object, it's pretty pointless. Pardon the pun. So what actually changes the this context? Well, it's actually callable objects. Callable objects allow us to change the this context. So for example, we have a method within an object and this method returns whatever this is pointing to. So let's take a look at this object dot method. And there it is. You can see that it's no longer the window object. The this pointer is now going outside of the scope of the function by one. So what it's doing is it's jumping outside of the function and it's going to the object that contains the method, which is this object right here. It's printing out that object that contains the prop property that don't forget has the this keyword, which is targeting the window object and then it also has the method right there there it is so it's actually changing the context and you also have the same for arrays because arrays are a type of object array and then this is on the index of one this function and we want to invoke it so we put in the parentheses you'll notice it returns the array in which this subroutine is located and what about a globally scoped subroutine. Well, if I go ahead and invoke it, this subroutine is called global. It fetches it out of memory and invokes it and it returns whatever this is pointing to. And this is just pointing to the window object. It steps out one, don't forget, just like our method, it stepped out one into the outer scope and that was this object. Well, now with our function, it's actually stepping out one into the window context because this is a globally scoped function right here. So this step out one from this context to this one and we get the window context. Nice and easy. Now also there are different ways you can invoke functions. Now you know about one way in which you can invoke a function. For example, we have said global 
So you just type the symbol name and then you invoke it. That is how you invoke a standard function or subroutine. However, here's the really cool part. You don't have to invoke a function that way. You can see here I'm targeting global as if it was a callable object. And notice the dot syntax, just like we work with objects and we use the dot syntax to access members, properties and methods within the object. Well, we're using that same member access operator on this global or callable object. And then we can use the call method. So this is proof that functions are treated as objects in JavaScript. And you can call the object, invoke it, and you can actually assign a value to this. Think of it like this equals object, for example. We are assigning the arguments value here. So at the moment, what I'm saying is I'm calling and invoking this subroutine, and I'm telling the this context, the context of this execution context will be of object. So I'm taking this object right here that I created earlier and I'm passing that into the global function. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. Now this isn't gonna print anything out in the console, but if I now run this code in the console, you'll notice it changed the this context actually be of the type object. So now we've changed the context of this which you can do with callable objects. And there's one more. You also have the new keyword. So you can say new global. Now this is interesting. The new keyword comes before we invoke the function. What does that do? It adds a new this context. So this by default with the global context is gonna be window, but it says, no, I want a new context. I literally want a blank object. That's what it's doing, it's putting in, it's assigning a new object to the this keyword. And that's what we have, new, and then you invoke the global subroutine. Let's go ahead and run that, new global. Hit return, and there you go. And if you have global, by default, it points to the window object, but it's how you invoke the function. You can invoke functions in different ways. You can use the call method on a callable object and pass in an argument, and that argument will be assigned to the this context. It will define the context of this execution context. Then also you have the new keyword, which is a new context, a completely blank and empty object and we'll talk about why this is important later. The standard way of invoking a function or subroutine by just calling it by its name. And if you do this by default, it will be the window object. No matter even if it's an embedded subroutine like so, if it's an embedded subroutine, again, the default of this will be equal to window again. However, if you have a subroutine, within an object scope or an array scope, it will return the object that invoked it. For example, you have object.method, and when you run that, it the this context is gonna be the object that invoked it, or you could say array is one, and then you can invoke it, and again, it's the object or array that invoked it that is the this context. If you were to, let's say, embed this in here, so let's go ahead and do one further. Let's say embed, let's create an object, and let's put this method inside of this object. And then when I hit refresh, let's say object.embed. And then we've got method. Now, what will be the this context? Well, it's the object in which the method was invoked from. So we do have the main object, but it was not directly invoked by that. We also have the embed object, this object, this scope here. And so this is now the context, embed. If I hit return, you'll notice it returns the embed object that contains our method. And if I put the embed property in here, and set that to true, let's say. Again, I can just run that and you'll see it is the embed object that is being returned. So if you're calling a method, then it is the object that it was invoked from. But please do note with methods, you can use dot call. So I can say dot call, and then I can let's say 
make the this context the array. So I'm going to say array. So now we're targeting our method here. We're invoking it, but we're invoking it via the call method. And we're passing in the array. We're telling the this context to equal array this time. Let's hit return. And you'll notice what you have is the array being returned. So you can change the this context of methods. And also you can type in new and then we can invoke this method. Again, it's just a subroutine that's placed within an object scope. But now if I hit return, again, we change the this context. The this context is a new object. It is a new object like so. And there is our new object that's returned. The this keyword now refers to a brand new context or contextual object. So that's how you invoke it. So it's number one, where is the function placed? If you're invoking it in the standard way like this or like this, it is basically where is the function placed? If it's placed inside of an object, it will be the object that it has been directly invoked from. If you invoke it with the call method, it will be whatever you have decided you want that this keyword to be targeted towards, whether it be a method or whether it be just a standard routine, or you have the new keyword. And if you invoke a method or of course any other subroutine on the global scope, it doesn't matter. It's going to make the this keyword point to a new context. Now, one final thing, you also have, let's say, embedded subroutines. So what I'm going to do is say console.log and I'm going to say, right, this comes from the global object and I'm going to log out whatever this is pointing to. But then also I can have an embedded subroutine called sub and I can also say console.log and then we're going to console out from sub and we're going to find out what this is pointing to. So let's run this little experiment and instead of saying return this, let's go ahead and invoke sub as well as everything's going to be exported out to the console. I'm going to hit refresh. And I'm also going to delete this invalid piece of code here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it. So let's say we call the global method subroutine. And we're going to call this subroutine. And you'll notice we get, well, two different results. First of all, you say from global, this is this console.log line, and we're targeting this keyword. And you can notice that it's targeting a new contextual object that we invoked it with. We said new global and it's invoking it with a new global object. Then we created this subroutine. We added it to the stack and invoked it. But we said console.log from sub this and we say console.log from sub and you'll notice it's now referring to the window object. So be very, very careful because now this refers to the window object here. And we'll talk more about why this is dangerous later on. But also we now know that by default callable objects will go to the global scope because of the way it's been invoked. It's just been invoked like that, a standard way to invoke it. We didn't say new sub. If you said new sub, then this would equal a new object but we invoked it like this. It's how you invoke that callable object, even if it's in another callable object. It's how you invoked it. Well, we invoked it that way, and we know that way, the this context by default, the standard way of invoking is the window object. So be very careful when you are using the this keyword.